Hey there, David Chesworth coming to you from Hilton Head Health on the beautiful Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. And we have our very first podcast and super excited to introduce our very first guest, Lynn Ann Covell. Um, she is, um, well, she has a, a pretty awesome background. She was the director of fitness and life coaching for 29 plus years at Green Mountain. She has been a guest fitness expert and life coach with us here at Hilton Head Health for the past four years. Um, she is an exercise is a medicine specialist. She's certified through AFA, NASM, IFA, AAAI, ISMA, which is the International Sports Medicine Association, and is a member of American College of Sports Medicine. So super excited. Did I miss anything there, Lynn? No, no, no. Thanks, Dave. But I, I'm pretty sure the you. list goes further than what I... Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, well, I, I'd like to just dive right in because I know our listeners are very interested to learn about some common obstacles when it comes to weight loss and just Absolutely. behavior change in general. So I'm just going to dive right into our first question. Lynn, why is weight loss so hard? Usually weight loss is difficult for people because what they're doing is it, expecting themselves to be in the level of fitness they were at some point in their youth, whether it's 16, 18, 24. I tell people all the time in my lectures that, look, here, here's you at 16. It's like a ship in the ocean. It came and it went. It's not coming back. What we can do is say, each day, I'm going to get up today and I'm going to do the best I can in my body today. Not judge myself by what I was back then and what I may be tomorrow, but here and today. And that's what ties in that piece of mindfulness that I bring. So, so for many clients that you've worked with, it's people comparing themselves to a younger, perhaps fitter version of themselves. Right, or another person, or what it says in a magazine I should look and feel like, instead of saying, okay, I want to look and feel my best. So instead of looking and feeling their best, they're asking, well, how much should I weigh? What should I wear? How should I wear it? All of these things. Instead of saying, okay, this is me, and this is my best me. Are you trying to be your best self on every given day? That's the big piece that people are looking for. Be your best, most authentic self. I'm not trying to be someone or something else. Be your best self. And that's enough. That's enough for all of us, really. It's enough. So, so what about somebody who wakes up early every morning, they're doing the meal prep that they are supposed to be doing, they're doing the workouts, and you know, they get on the scale, and by gosh, that number does not say what they think it does, they deserve to see. Well, first of all, the word deserve means there's a mark and a measure, and that's the biggest snare that, that people who are trying to get more healthy fall in. That's the snare. What's the mark? What's the measure? We have to look beyond the scale to measure our success. What are the other measurements of success? How do I feel? Before you jump on that scale, you say, how do I feel in my body? How's my energy level? You know, am I alert during my day at work? Am I feeling comfortable in my skin, my clothes, and my body? These are the things that we have to look at. And when we stop looking at those things and we focus everything on the scale, then what happens is we're always going to be disappointed because we're expecting something that doesn't match up with what our body has to offer. So I deserve to have a great day. What am I doing today to make it a great day? Well, maybe I jumped on the scale, but prior to jumping on the school scale, did I give myself a chance to have that good day? Or did I jump on the scale first? Maybe I say, all right, all right, how do I feel in my body? What have I, what have I done to up my fitness level? Have I done that? And if I've done that, great, good for me. Give me some cred before I jump on the scale and go, oh, well, there you go. There it is. So other than using the scale, giving ourselves credit for the things that we are doing instead of beating ourselves up for what isn't yet happening. It's a process and we have to trust the process. In the beginning, when I first start working with them, okay, I'll ask a series of questions. Like when I'm life coaching, I'm gonna ask a series of questions. How are you eating? What's your exercise level? Do you feel comfortable in your body? Do you feel comfortable in your clothes? What is the worst scenario for you vis-a-vis -vis your body do you have to decline when somebody says hey you want to go for a walk 
and do you shrink back and say, well, uh, how far is it? Is there an incline and how long are you going to be? You know, do I need to bring a canteen? You know, yeah. <laughs> how long am I going to be going? So, so then we use those marks and measures as we go rather than the weight. We could still use the weight, mind you, because, okay, fine. That is a mark. It is a measure. True. So there's, yeah, there's a lot of marks and measures and it's just about giving yourself credit for those things one little bite at a time. It's not going to, it's not going to happen overnight. It doesn't. Right. It didn't get there overnight, so it's not going to happen overnight, getting the other way around. We find at Hilton Head Health is a lot of our guests tend to get hyper-focused on the scale, the number on the scale. And what people don't realize is that number doesn't tell you what your muscle mass is, how much how much right. fat mass you're losing, right. if you're retaining water from inflammation or you just did a strenuous workout, if you're getting poor sleep, your hormones are out of whack. All of your success hinged on a number on the scale is seems detrimental. Right. Beyond the scale, we can use things. A great tip is use your Fitbit, use your Apple Watch, use, you know, one of these devices because you know what? Adding steps to your day, that's something you could see every single day. Even if you just added five more steps, it's more than yesterday. So that's a success. So I want to get back to the scale really quick because I think, you know, there's a lot of different schools of thought out there around, you know, mm -hmm. how often you should weigh yourself. Some, some say you should weigh yourself every day, others every week. What's your professional opinion on scale frequency? If we're weighing every day, you know, it, it is much like having an open wound and, and ripping the bandage off day after day after day seeing if it's if it's done yet is it fixed yet is it healed yet we're stepping over if if we weigh every single day we're stepping over all of those little nuggets of success those things like step you know having a hundred more steps in my day or bending down to get a piece of paper and oh i didn't fall down oh i didn't have to hurt my back doing it um maybe being able to take a walk with your kids with a stroller or something and not being winded or wheezing like a dying animal, you know, right. just being able, wow, I took that walk and I, I'm, I'm feeling better. That's a success nugget. And we have to collect those nuggets. And those are more accurate in registering how we feel. So when it comes to the weighing, sometimes in our head, we want to see the validity of how we feel because we don't trust in it. So to do that every now and again, even once a week if you wanted to, is fine. But every day, I, I really have found with my life coaching clients and with many of my clients just as a personal trainer, that doing it every day doesn't serve them well. It doesn't give them enough time to make a big difference and then go, wow, I had a great week, you know? Because if you're doing that any given day, the body fluctuates. Mm -hmm. How much water did you drink? You know, you know, what did you eat for food? That fluctuates day to day. So doing it every day, no, I'm not a big fan. I, I guess one of the, I, I, well, as a life coach and with as much experience that you've had, have you also noticed that this is maybe an, a very individual thing? Or have you noticed just generally the less often is better? Have you noticed that? Well, generally to say, no, don't ever weigh yourself. I don't think that serves either because then there's that, you know, floating ambiguously, like, I think I'm doing good. I'm not sure if I'm doing good. I'm looking at the signs and this and that. So every now and then getting on there, I think once a week is perfectly fine. Go ahead and, and, and jump on the scale, but don't forget the other marks and measures. Now, there are some people who get on the scale every day, every day. They want to see, they want to see, but then they become so obsessed with that moment and they put so much emotional connection to that moment that if it's not, it'll trash their day. So in an effort to get people to not give the scale the power and to take the power back on themselves, mm -hmm. I suggest that they maybe just do it once a week or so. Yeah. So what I think I'm hearing you saying is that in some ways it depends on your relationship with the scale, but yes. in this environment, it's inevitable that, you know, that number is on people's minds. Exactly. And so what you really... What I continue to hear you say is find other measures of success right. besides the scale. Right. You can what, still use it, but have the other measure. That's with what you were saying before. Okay, well, I've got a person who doesn't weigh at all, and now I'm telling them to weigh. Yeah. Or a person that weighs all the time, and now I'm telling them not to. Yeah. It's finding that happy medium. It's like anything else. Find what fits for you. 
inform yourself, stay informed, stay in touch with your body, you know, but give the process a chance. Do the work and feel what you're going to feel out of the experience of moving your body more, eating well, doing all of these things. And then maybe after a week or so, okay, now I'm going to check. I've already, I've already done the internal check of how I feel and, and where I think I am in this, but then do the external check too. Okay, well, let's take a look at that scale, but it's not, ta-da, here's the scale. If we make such a big deal of it, it can backfire. Right. And that's what we don't want. And especially as a life coach, I don't, I don't want that for all my clients, but for some, the reality of knowing, hey, here's what you're telling me you're doing, you know, yeah. Are, uh, how are you feeling? Are you feel oh, you're not feeling any different, huh? Are you really doing that much? And usually the answer is, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm really not doing that much. I, I did skip a few words. Okay, yeah. so. Now that you mention it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so then we can get to the bottom of, okay. Yeah. Um, so keep in mind as well, when a person is overtraining because they want that number on the mm -hmm. scale, the body's reaction is those muscles swell. When those muscles swell, we've got that added fluid in the body. So. If we're elevating cortisol levels because we're getting on the scale and we're overtraining and it's elevating the inflammation in our body and we're getting on the scale, it doesn't, it doesn't help that getting on the scale right. every day. So if we see that, we definitely pull them back from doing it every day or, or more often. Or if you're overtraining, you increase the risk of getting injured exactly. and you might resent exercise more. Right. Um, you also might, you know, contribute to an unhealthy relationship with food. Like yes. you might start to overeat. Right. And I mean, because I could do burpees for an hour. I might burn four or five hundred calories. Right. How easy is it? Is it to eat? But now I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay myself back right. by having this or that. <laughs> right. And here's something that that people often really don't think about when you overtrain. So let, let's say I say, okay, here's what Linnean says I need to do for the amount of cardio flexibility, core, and strength. So that lineage, she doesn't know what she's talking about. I'm going to do three times as much. So what they do when they're doing that is go up and over the bell curve of here's what I need to do to feel good, all the way back down to how I feel when I don't exercise. Tired, sore, achy, lethargic, sleepless. And so they come full circle in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. So the overtraining, it never pays. Right. I think you'll like this. This is a a success story of a, of a prior guest who, who frequents here um, to Hilton Head Health, and she, she loves going on cruises. Right. And she, that's not something she's willing to change, and it's so easy to overindulge on a cruise. Like, I'm going on my cruise. So on one of her visits, yeah, so on one of her visits, she's scheduled to come here and right after to go on the cruise. And oh. all the other guests were like, yeah, that's what we thought, but all the other guests were like, what are you, crazy? You come here and then immediately sabotage yourself and... And she said, no, no, actually, I know I'm not willing to give up cruises. I wanted to come here to get my mind right. Typically, I go on a cruise and I gain 10 pounds. Right. Um, and I wanted to perform better on this cruise. And sure enough, she went, goes on the cruise. Afterwards, she calls us and she says, hey, I got to tell you guys something. Um, I went on the cruise and I gained two pounds, but I feel like I lost eight. The two pound weight gain victory. She, she didn't move the needle necessarily with weight loss in the right direction. But her behavior and her performance in a given circumstance improve. Exactly. And so that's another measure of success. It is. It is. That's another nugget right there. Yeah. Hey, I didn't gain that 10 pounds. Yeah. You know, I lost eight. I didn't, you know, it, I, I think that's fabulous. Yeah. That's fabulous. She put her mind in the right space before she went on the trip. Yeah. Proof is in the pudding, though. There it is. It she is. proved it. She proved what we're saying works. Yeah. And it, and it didn't need to be the scale. When she got back... Then she weighed herself. She yeah. didn't get on the, the cruise and right. weigh herself every, day, every, right. av every afternoon or whatever. It's not about the number on the scale. It, it is about the behavior change. It is about the lifestyle. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you get, so you're known for this something is always better than nothing sentiment. And right. Whenever we say that around campus, people are always like, you must have, you must have been with Lanann. Um, so how do you get your all or nothing clients, which we see all the time, we see all or nothing all the time, that mindset, how do you get them to connect with that sentiment of something is better than nothing? Well, first off, you have to point out what they can do. So when you point out what they can do, okay, you're able to walk, you're able to you know, go out and have fun, do what you want, 
maybe have a little leftover energy for leisure time pursuits. You want to find out what the goal is first. So each person has to individually figure out what their goal is. Now, once they figure out what that goal is, then the next step, the next step is saying, okay, if I do too much, it's not going to work. If I don't do anything, it's not going to work. Now that I know that, if I do something, then I'm still taking a step towards my goal. But if I do nothing, it's not going to work. If I do everything and I do too much, it, it pulls me back from getting what I need. The biggest defeat, David, really, and, and anybody out there, the biggest defeat is when you mark or you measure yourself against somebody else or something else. And you think, if I'm not performing at that level, then I guess I'm just not performing. So I'm going to push myself to perform at that level. No, your pace is the pace. Your pace is the pace. And something is always, always better than nothing. So if I'm at my pace, I'm at the right pace. I don't have to work at this guy. You know, I go to the gym. Do I have to look like Susie Thong girl? You know, do I have to look like Billy Bob Jarhead? No, I don't have to look at them and I don't need to perform like them. I need to perform like me in my body today. Again, Dave, this brings us back to that wellness piece. Mm -hmm. It brings us back to that mindfulness. Am I being mindful? Am I listening to my body? And you know what? Instead of judging, you know, the, the second half to that is something is always better than nothing. Then the next thing that comes out of my mouth is your pace is the pace, right? So if I'm saying that, and if I'm at my pace, then I'm doing it exactly as I'm supposed to do. The next thing I say to people is this. Don't beat yourself up for what you can't do. Thank yourself for what you can do. That's where we're at. Be grateful. Be happy about what you can do. And don't beat yourself up for what you can't do. Because tomorrow's a new day and another opportunity to do a little bit more. So part of it, part of the problem that people face is this is the comparison piece. They're, Correct. And, and if they can't be the best, if they can't be perfect, why bother? Correct. And then another... And some people will still do that. Even though you're, we're setting them up at age three, yeah. we're setting them up not to compare. Hey, you're you. Do your best. Some of them still do it. And right. we, have to, we have to keep telling them, no. No, this is about you. Right. So you're right, yeah. Yeah, your pace is the pace. And then you mentioned you have them focus on can versus can't. And I love that because we're like hardwired to just dwell on the things we can't do. Exactly. But, but it's amazing that I'm sure you see this with your coaching clients, that when you get them to focus on what they can do, their horizon of what they can do continues to expand. Well, they get excited. Yeah. Well, the first thing is they get excited and they get, they get motivated and they're like, oh my gosh. Okay. And, you know, in, in, a, in a coaching session, it, it goes in little waves and it's always astounding to me when, it, when, when this happens. But I, I warn them ahead of time that it might happen. People are, you know, in there and, you know, they may not know me that well when they first come in for a coaching. And when we start to create that plan and they're actually doing it, so that's right. For instance, when they're at age three or when they're at home and they're doing the exercise and you're telling them, hey, something's better than nothing, don't get, then all of a sudden the tears come. Like, I, I, I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect. I can just be me. And that's enough. It's a win-win. You can't lose. If you're doing something, you can't lose. You're always stepping towards your goal. Doing nothing is literally the only thing holding you back. Inactivity is your worst enemy. That's what yeah. I say in my, I've said that for a hundred years. It will beat you down. It is the mind killer. So you're saying just because you're not at the destination today doesn't mean you can't appreciate and be your, the best version of your possible self today. We're not going to wake up tomorrow and be Thich Nhat Hanh, right? right. <laughs> you know, we're not going to be him, but we're going to do our best to pull it together as much as we can and say, okay, because some moments we tell people all the time, accept what the moment brings. Well, if it's a really crappy moment, I don't want to linger. Yeah. I don't want to get out of it. Right. So I'm going to address it with myself. Oh, maybe I didn't do 100% of what I wanted to do today, but I, but I did the best that I could. Good. Tomorrow's a different day, right? So we take that mindfulness and we're okay with it in the moment. But then when we add fitness to the piece, when we add that fitness piece, in fitness we do have to have goals. In mindfulness we don't. So that's where we have to transition. And that transition is really hard for some people.
you have been coming to Hilton Head Health for you know the past four years, right. and every time you come, you you really connect with our guests. You resonate with them. Um, we get the question frequently: When is Lynn coming back? When is she coming back? And you just you have this energy about you, and so I, I'm just curious, you know, for for myself and for the listeners, why why do you do what you do? You know, I I've had that. I've had a lot of people ask me that question, like, why do you do this? I was kind of sickly as a child. Um, things didn't come that naturally. Uh, so I, I, I did spend lots of time in, in hospitals and, you know, little oxygen situation, oxygen room situation. So to get out was great. It was fun. Um, <laughs> the first two weeks I was out of the hospital as a kid, then boom, we lived, uh, in California, ran off a cliff, fell right down into a tree, 81 feet. Bam. Okay. So I wasn't ready for the world. Well, the world was ready for me, but I wasn't ready for it. Ooh. So, so, so back down the, the chute again. Um, then I ran everywhere, everywhere from fourth grade through college. Um, I was on a swim team. All, I, I did all those things. I did have an accident, broke my neck back. And as a result, couldn't get up and walk and run and do all the things that I could do. I became very frustrated with that. And I, in recovering from that, I learned to modify for myself. Okay, if I can't do it this way, then I'm gonna do it this way. If I can't do it this way, then I'm gonna do it another way or another way. And I tell people that all the time. I'll say, I'm gonna, mod I'm gonna modify everything so that it fits you like a glove. And I feel like I'm paying it forward for the doctors and the nurses who helped me to get back to where I needed to be. I mean, I had, I had a lot of uh, support. I had a lot of support from my parents, from my brothers and sisters. Um, but interestingly, you know, when you're a big athlete, you have all these friends. Hey, hey, hey. After, if you have an injury, and I'm sure you know because you had a very similar injury, right? We share that in common. Which yeah. It's crazy. So afterwards, you find out who the real friends are. Who really comes to visit? Who's really there? So listening to people, listening to where they are on their journey and in that moment, and then taking that and assisting them, not carrying them but assisting them to their next step. I, I think that's why I'm here. I think that that's what I do. That's what I'm driven to do. Pay it forward, help somebody else on that next step because that one step, whether it's at age three or wherever you meet that person, if you can help them through that step and get to the next step, we are the catalyst for their success. So we're the catalyst for your success. And, and being a catalyst and doing it for you, two different things, it's two different things. So well, it's it, like the old, you know, teach a person to fish versus yes, fishing for yes, them. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, that, that, it, that gets me excited. That's, that's where my energy is from and from up there too, but yeah. you know, yeah. but, but that's definitely where, where my energy is from. I've, um, I just never gave up. I just never gave up. And, and so I said, okay, I'm going to make sure that I know what I'm doing. So go get certified, know how to do this, not just for yourself, but for other people. And th th you know what? That's worth more than a paycheck. Yeah. That is worth more. You know that. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's worth more than a paycheck, just being able to see it. Um, remember the one client that walking with a walker, yeah. and I said to her when I left, I had left, and she was in Loosewell, right? Yeah. So, so she was in Loosewell, and she's working, 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 and I'm, now I'm back again. And she says, oh, oh, I, I just really want to work. We worked, it and, and she was still walking with a walker. I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, there's a better way. So we worked a core, we worked about it, and I said, this is a step. Each day, it was still painful, you know, she still had physical, you know, infirmities, she still had injuries to get over. It was painful, but she worked it step by step. She trusted the process, mm -hmm. and then, you know, you know, right before she left, I said, you're ready. She said, ready for what? I said, ready for what you've been working for. What did you say we were going to work on in the beginning? 
Oh, he said, I'm going to walk on my own. I said, yeah, not with assistance from other people, but on your own. And Love she, that. It, and, and she did, and the tears just streamed down her face. But it's not what I did. It was me being the catalyst for her to believe again right. in herself and her abilities. And so many people come to us at, at Hilton Head. Some people come to us. Um, in our daily lives, I know I have life coaching clients, and I, you know, I work back in Pensacola, um, and people come, and we can either be that catalyst, or we can just come in and do our job and leave, come in and do our job and leave. But you know what? Then we don't feel right. good. Then we're not living our most authentic right. self. So that's a catalyst for me: is be authentic, be real. Don't candy coat it. You know. Right. But so cool about what you said is. That's like a, a regular occurrence at Hilton Head Health to see exactly. people no longer use their walkers, to canes, see people... walkers, leg and knee braces, right? All of that stuff. So, for those of you listening who don't know that much about Hilton Head Health, what's extra cool about that story that Lenan just told is stuff like that happens all the time. People come with a walker, they leave not needing one. They come getting winded just walking down the hallway, and now they're doing a half mile or a mile walk. Right by the end of their stay, exactly. As a team, we work together with you and kind of custom fit things for you so that you begin to feel those little nuggets of success yes. again. And I felt the nugget of success today. Tomorrow I'm looking for a new one. And, and that leads you to push to the level that you can mm -hmm. and, and feel really good about it. It almost sounds like you cultivated a lot of gratitude through your personal journey you're grateful for the things that you can do you you made it through a lot of um you overcame a lot of hurdles through the through a support team and right and and you almost kind of lived yourself through all of these can'ts yes and cans yes and you want to pay it forward to others right and say hey look this works Whatever your challenge is, this approach to change, to self-improvement works. It, it does work, and I know it works from personal experience. Yeah. And it's taking I can't out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Take, and we do that. We do that as instructors all the time. But when, you, but when we've lived it, and when we, you and I have walked that walk, and when we go through that, trust me, you can do it. And, yeah. and we mean it when we say, trust us. You can do this. This is something that you have to want, though. And yeah. Th and that's the big piece. They have to want it. People come to Hilton Head at a different stage of readiness all the time. Yeah. Some people come five times. Maybe in the first four visits, they weren't at a readiness stage to hear the message, to embrace the message, and to get the benefit from it. So that, but they knew something was there. Yeah. So they keep coming back, right? So that one time. That's when the magic happens. It's that one time when it clicks and they go, you know what? I can do this. Yeah. And I'm going to do this. And I'm not doing that anymore. You know? Yeah. I, I love when that happens. I love to be a fly on the wall sometimes and just, you know, hear a conversation without being, you know, a, a creeper. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. I'm not a creeper. I'm yeah. just like, wow. That's cool. That's, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. And, and that's what we were doing this for because it's, that's why when you can see there and be there in that moment, it's just so much, it's so worth it. It's so worth it. So I want to address something you said that some of our listeners might be thinking, because you said something that said, we need to eliminate can't. Right. So say someone listen, someone might be listening right now thinking, well, well, Lenan, I have to know what my limitations are so I don't hurt myself. I mean, should I ignore what I can't do? I mean, right. You don't ignore what you can't do, but you see those as the boundary okay do what you can do and feel good about it don't beat yourself up for what you can't do so what we're doing at, at Hilton Head is we're laying down the foundation we're gonna tell you how much cardio how much strength how much flexibility the average person needs now if it's a person that's extremely deconditioned that may have to be on a sliding scale and we work with you for that that's how we show this is a limitation for this if you've had uh, a recent doctor's visit and they say well you're bone on bone 
you know, you're not going to be able to do a lot of things. We're going to have to replace your knee, whatever. We're not saying you're going to come here and we're going to boot camp you to death. We're saying you're going to come here and we're going to show you how much you can do at your level. We're not going to say you can't do this and you can't do this, but we're going to give those safety guidelines for you. This is, this is the best scenario right here. Here's what's going to work for you. Let's get there. And then when you get there, we're going yeah. to reassess, right? Or you're going to go back to your doctor and you're going to say, Hey, I'm doing this, this, and this what's next. And yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. I like how you said that. It's, it's not what you can't do. It's, it's a boundary you need to be aware of right. in, this, in this game that, that, we're, that we're in. Um, but we're, we're in it to move in a positive direction. Right. When you get there to the yeah. edge of that boundary, we're going to reassess and then create a new one. Right. That's all it is. I have another story, if you don't mind hearing another story about. So another guest. Um, I'm a story. I like stories. So we had a guest who I, I was giving a, a presentation at Hilton Head Health. And she comes up after and she says, David, I, I just got to share this story with you. And she's like, it's going gonna, it's gonna to sound really weird at first, but I swear it has a point. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm going to say it. I'm going to try and say it the way she said it. So she said, okay, David, what do you know about a fleas? I said, fleas? Uh, well, they're these pests. They get on your dogs and cats and they're itchy. That's about it. I don't know. Right. And she goes, yeah, well, did you know that fleas can jump 100 times their height? So, okay, you knew this. Yes. I didn't know this. Yes. So I said, I didn't know. I didn't know that. She said, well, there's this tale of a scientist who is fascinated by this. And so he captured the flea in a jar. The flea jumped right out. So the next time the scientist came by, he put a lid on it right away. And the flea was jumping and hitting the lid and, and couldn't get out. The scientist was taking his notes. Well, eventually the flea was getting tired and couldn't reach the lid anymore. And, it, you know, the scientist started to feel guilty. So he's like, well, I should let the flea go. So he takes the lid off, but the flea still can't get out. It was either too tired or it learned to defeat whatever, whatever the reason. And so the, the scientist said, well, I can't let the flea free until he's fully capable. I can't let him out in the wild. Right. So he did a follow-up experiment, put the jar on a stove, slowly started cranking up the heat in the stove. The flea started to jump higher and eventually jumped out. And this guest said, David, I know that was a weird story, but I feel like I'm the flea because 20 years ago, I could jump. Uh, okay. I was active. I was fit. I loved to ski. And I was in a ski accident, and I had a physical cap on what I could do. Correct. I couldn't jump as high anymore. And, and here I am 20 years later. I've been through the physical therapy. I've been through the surgery, and it, it, which was years ago. But it wasn't until I came to Hilton Head Health and tried these things that I realized. Hey, I, I can do some I can of this. Jump. There are times in your life when you have physical boundaries. Correct. Of what you, and it doesn't do you any good to ignore those. Right. But at the same time, it... It's even worse to ignore the things that you can do because you might, who knows how long she's been delaying. Right. Who knows how long that physical cap has you been can't, You can't, you can't, you can't, you right. can't. You'll, you you'll never, you'll never, you'll never. You know, that bothers me sometimes when yeah. a physician would say something, oh, you'll never do this and you'll never do that. Oh, you'll never walk again. Well, yeah. I heard it. I didn't believe it. And I run. And I'm walking. And, and, I, I, run. and I run. Even better. again. Yeah. I don't run on concrete an awful lot, not in a marathon, but I can do a 5K. Yeah. I'll do a 5K with anybody, right? Yeah. So that is case in point right there. But here's a deeper meaning to that. The fire had to be turned up. That's what we do. Yes. We turn up the fire underneath you so that you'll jump again. So that's, that's right. Spot on. Spot on. Love that. I like that one. That was good. That's a fun story, right? The flea story. I'm the flea, flea story. story. You can take that. Have you ever heard the flea? <laughs> I've taken a lot of your stuff. So All right. You can take mine. <laughs> yeah. Only the stuff that you've shared with me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I only have two more questions. So I guess... The la this next one is, is there anything that you think that the listener should hear about, you know, common obstacles that I, I didn't ask about? When you are at home and you're dealing with folks that, that don't understand the journey that you're on, that bring in the judgment piece, um, I have this thing that I have clients use called the U-turn, the you know, um, Somebody says, shouldn't you be exercising? And I tell them, 
don't feel bad because then all of a sudden now you now you feel now I'm not exercising so I should feel bad. No. Just turn to them and say, not right now. I'm going to do my exercise at yada yada time. Why are you on the way to the gym? The U-turn. Turn it around. Use the U-turn. Be you and you is good enough. Um, another thing is, you know, oh, should you be eating that? I the can't food on, police. I can't on my diet. Why? You can't have it on yours? Sorry. Sure. Food isn't our enemy. Um, movement isn't an insurmountable mountain. We have to have our inner belief that, that we can do this. And you have to remind yourself daily. And that... That can be defeating to some people who are isolated or depressed or things like that. So sometimes that that is really hard for people to get a handle on. But I, I think creating your own support, um, find a coworker, somebody to, to walk with, a friend, your spouse, sometimes if you like them. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you don't, no. Um, but find somebody that you can do it with or check in. Uh, often that can that can be a big obstacle, you know, if a pe person feels isolated. But I suggest people, you know, there are meetup groups out there. You can go to your area chamber of commerce at home. When you're here, you don't you don't need camaraderie. It's built in. When you come to Hilton Head, you have your support team. There's the staff, but then there's the other people. Everybody's che cheering everybody on. So it's like, oh no, you could do it. You could do it. You could do it. And so when they're here, they're in this happy bubble. When they go home, they say, okay, how can I carry the happy bubble home? Well, sometimes they carry us home vis-a-vis uh, -vis coaching or, or things like that. So, right. We do yeah. have that Hilton Head Health at Home program. Now. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, but that loneliness piece, I mean, sometimes that can be a deeper thing where they might need additional support. They might. Yeah. You might have to seek additional support for that. Um, and, and a lot of people exercise well with other people but they don't exercise well alone mm -hmm. personally i'm a solitary exerciser you wouldn't think it by the job that i have <laughs> but when i'm doing my job that's the job yeah my, i'm a hundred percent for the client that is sitting in front of me it's not my workout right uh, and all i i think everybody needs to understand that you know then it's their workout it's all about them but i actually say that to people in class and Somebody laughed the other day. I said, remember, this is all about you. And the lady stopped what she was doing and she goes, really? And I go, well, yes, this is about you. And, and you being here and you doing this, this isn't about anybody else in this room right now. To you, this is your journey. And she kind of walked like this for the rest <laughs> of the day. Like, excuse me, I love myself today. She was really just happy with herself. So. Yeah, love that. Yeah, <laughs> it's all about me. It is all. It is all about me. <laughs> love it. So I, I think we're running low on time, but I, I did want to take this opportunity to to plug your next visits with us because you're not here all year round. You're no. here just you know a few times out of the year. Do you, I, I have it written down here, but do you remember when you're coming next? I I think the last couple of weeks in February, and then April. Something. Not April. So oh, we got, April. What is it? We got February 12th to 26th. Right, right, right. We got May 7th to 21st. Oh, yes, May 7th. August 6th to 20th, and then September 10th to 24th. So exactly. There's going to be a link attached to this with a landing page with, you know, where they can learn all about the programs you're going to have here. Great, great, um, great. Here. And so I, I'm looking forward to seeing some of you that are maybe listening to this podcast right now or watching this podcast. I come for two weeks at a time. Um, I teach everything from Tai Chi to Tabata, um, strength training, aquatics, just, just a lot of different things. It's a fun time for me. Yeah. I have a great time, and I, and I get to come and see my son who works here at Hilton Head Health as well. Um, and I do life coaching and personal training while I'm here, so you'll have the opportunity to work one-on-one -on -one with me. Um, some people will be doing the at-home, and they'll work you know, one-on-one -on -one with me in the coaching as well. Um, my coaching is a little bit different. It's not health coaching, it's life coaching, but some of you will uh, choose to do that as well. And it's a blast. It's fun. I love coming back. Uh, I meet new people every time. It is, it is hilarious fun. The setting is absolutely beautiful. Granted, I live in Pensacola where there's a beach, 
in this beautiful and beautiful water, but here. I and life is hard for you. Oh, I know. It's, it's really <laughs> you live hard. You the beach and you sometimes come to the beach. Come to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> come to the beach. But being here and, and seeing people out on the beach and, and having a good day is, yeah. is, is it. It's picturesque. It's beautiful. It's a healthy atmosphere. Mm -hmm. The Hilton Head is a healthy atmosphere place. And, and that's why I like coming. Mm -hmm. It's just enjoyment the whole time I'm here. Yeah. Well, Lenann, this has been awesome. I, I couldn't be happier to have you as our very first guest. Awesome. I was excited. You are a mentor of mine. I look yes. up to you so deeply, and um, this has been super cool. So thank awesome. you so much for doing this. And, awesome. Um, and for those of you listening, um, if you have any questions you want answered, if, you know, if there's anything that you would like to see us do on this podcast, please comment. Please let us know. Reach out. This is ultimately for you. We want to provide value to you, service to you, and help you achieve, as Lenan said, the best version you can be every day. So um, thanks for listening, and we'll, we'll see you next time.